passport adventures, where every week I'm your tour guide as we explore countries of the world from the comforts of home. And where are we headed this week? We're headed to Kenya, a country right on the equator. And you know what? They don't have four seasons a year, only two, wet and dry. Let's get going. apartment buildings, businesses, factories, and wild animals. That's right. The Nairobi National Park is home to lots of wild animals and there's no big fence. They're free to roam, but don't worry, they put trackers on the animals. And if they end up in someone's neighborhood, they come and get them. Kenya is home to so many interesting animals. They've got, oh, let me get out of the way so you can see them. Elephants, hippos, crocodiles, hyenas, rhinos, cheetahs, baboons, and zebras, giraffes, flamingos, <laughs> warthogs, and meerkats. Look, it's just like the movie Lion King. Warthogs and meerkats are friends in real life. In fact, did you know that the word they use in Kenya for lion is Simba? <laughs> and Hakuna Matata isn't just something Disney came up with. It means no worries in Swahili, the official language of Kenya. And it's also their national philosophy. Though most all Kenyans can understand Swahili, there are a total of 68 different languages and 42 different tribes, each with their own customs, including this awesome display of jumping by the Maasai tribe. Here are some apartment buildings in Nairobi. Lots of people live in the apartment buildings. And down here, where you see the tin pieces, those are actually homes of some of the very poorest people in Nairobi. Once you leave the city, homes are usually made of whatever natural resources they find around. And they're grouped together with extended family all living close by. Brothers, sisters, and cousins all sharing homes. So you'll notice that at this house there are these plastic jugs outside. Because there is no running water, the people have to go to the water source and get the water. And everyone does it, the grown-ups and the little kids included. The children have lots of chores to do on top of their schoolwork. But don't worry, they make up for it by having lots of fun. Hey, here are some kids. Hi, guys. If I want to say hello to them, I would use the language with Swahili. Swahili is the most prominent of all languages in Kenya. And hello in Swahili is Jumbo. So I would say Jumbo. And these boys and girls would most likely have names like Zawadi if it's a girl or Okio if it's a boy. If I ask them what they do for fun, they'd probably say, oh, they play soccer, which they call football, tag, hide and seek, and even this game, Mankala. More about Mankala later. If we sat down for a snack together, these kids and I would probably have some delicious chai and mandazi. Mandazi is like a bun, but it's fried like a donut. Here are some school kids frying up some mandazi. And the chai that they drink isn't the spice chai we get here at Starbucks. Chai is actually just the Swahili word for tea. And they drink tea every day, many times a day. How many times a day do these kids drink tea? Well, let's see. There's breakfast, uh, morning snack, after lunch, 
tea time in the afternoon, and after dinner. Five times a day, these children drink chai. But it's really just hot tea with milk and lots of sugar. The Kenyans grow a lot of tea. <laughs> they also grow uh, coffee and sugar cane, and they're one of the world's biggest exporters of beautiful flowers. I've enjoyed learning about Kenya. It's very different from our country, but I just know I could hang out with these kids, drink tea, watch the animals, and play games. Well, now it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye in Swahili is Kwahiri. So, Kwahiri, Kenya, it's been a blast. Bye-bye. It's always good to get back home, but I did pack a few things for you in the packet to remind you of our adventure in Kenya. There are six different animal pages, three pages for you to use this, to make the stands, the recipe from Andazi, <laughs> and some cardamom, which is a spice you can put in the mandazi. It's a spice um, that they grow in Kenya and they really enjoy it in their uh, tea and other baked goods. So, what to do with these pages? You can do the simplest of things. You can color, cut the animal out, and put it on a stick. You can use the stands and put each animal on its stand and kind of act, have them act things out. You can simply cut, color and cut the animals out and put them on your own pictures. Or if you want to go whole hog like I did because I was very excited, <laughs> you can make your own safari diorama. I'm sure there are other things you can think of to do with this. You're very creative. I've seen your wonderful projects. The children we saw playing Mancala were playing it in the ground, which is the common way to play it. You don't really need any toys. Uh, you just use what's around. And they would dig one, two, three, four, five, six holes for each person and then two cups, one on each side. Now, when they play it, they're not um, hampered by the toy they have in front of them, so they have actually played it with many more holes, but the standard toy comes with six holes on each side. And some sort of marker. Now, they're in the wild. What are they going to use? They could use dried beans if they had some co uh, coffee beans or something, but most likely they're going to use pebbles. So they've made holes in the ground and they have pebbles. If you wanted to play this at home and you didn't have a Moncala board, you could actually just take a egg carton, cut up anything, off anything that isn't the 12 cups. So there's your 12 cups, and then you could either have a Dixie cup or just play by putting uh, the last two cups on the end, just the flat surface. Easy peasy. And if you didn't have, the game comes with the pedals that you use, usually they use pretty ones because it's a game that you've got. You could use whatever you have at home, like last week we used for our tromboli game, we used beads, so you could use plastic beads. They go all over the place. Uh, so, the rules of 
Ankala, <laughs> are very simple. And I'm going to play it with whoever I can find to play a game with me. I wonder who that'll be. So why don't we get uh, my friend up here and we'll show you how to play. Okay, I have the game set up. The reason we're filming it this way so that all you see is the board is so that you can see the board. Although I'm sure you would love to see our wonderful faces, the game will make much more sense if you get a better eye view of the board. So, we have put four beads in each of the holes. This is Shane's side. This is my side. This is Shane's pot. This is my pot. You need to put four in each, and there are 12 holes, so if you did the math, you would find out you need 48 beads, buttons, beans, whatever you're going to use. Now, I'm going to go first this time. <laughs> Shane beat me in the pregame, and I'm out for revenge. <laughs> so, what you do is you pick up any of the buckets from your side. So I'm going to start with this one. Then you put, going counterclockwise, you're going to put one in each of the holes, but you don't put one in your opponent's cup. You don't want them to get points. These are going to be Shane's points, and these are going to be my points. So I go one, two, three, four. There are beads in here, so I pick them up, and I continue counterclockwise. One, two, three. Four. And I put this one in mine. Yay! I have a point. These won't get touched. Now, because I landed in my pot, I get to go again. So I'm going to pick this pile and go counterclockwise. One, two, three, four. One, three, four, five, six. Woohoo! I'm on a roll. Oh, I'm gangbusters. Oh, haha. <laughs> I landed last in a cup that had no other beads in it. That means my turn is over. Now it is Shane's turn. Where's the trash talk, Shane? Come on. <laughs> yeah, no, I wanted to put one in yours. All right, he also has landed in his pot, so he gets to keep going. <laughs> so we're going to speed through this so you can see how a game will go and uh, you won't be sitting here with us for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> it takes a while. Watch and have fun. is empty. And it doesn't matter whose side empties first. That doesn't determine the winner. When one side is empty, we count what is in our cup. And so far, Shane is really winning. It's kind of disappointing. He did the same thing to me yesterday. 
Uh, I don't know if I have a chance of catching up, but I'm going to try. If you play Mancala for quite a while, you learn strategy about which beads to pick and which piles will work better. I haven't got there yet. I'm going on sheer luck. So, my turn and we'll speed up again because this is going to take a while. Say it to them, they know you won. Uh, yeah. As you can see, oh, maybe you can't see. I have 25. <laughs> <laughs> right. Shane had 25, I had 15. Once more, I have to give it up. Shane wins. Yay! So, Shane won the marathon game of Mancala. I'll get him next time, don't you worry. Right now, I'm going to enjoy this and uh, say a fond farewell to Kenya. It's been a good time. Where are we headed next week? You'll have to tune in to find out. Bye, guys. <laughs>